Hey guys, it's Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to help you prepare for your second conversation in Portuguese. This is a continuation of my video, Your First Conversation in Portuguese. So if you haven't watched it yet, I recommend you check that one out first and then come back to this one. As in the first video, I'll be guiding you through what you'll need to know as you take your first steps in speaking Portuguese. If you want to learn how to leverage your Spanish to learn Portuguese a lot faster, Make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified every time I post a video. So you had a great first conversation in Portuguese with your new Brazilian friend Paulo and are ready for your second conversation with him. This time, you want to surprise him with a little slang. So instead of the standard tudo bem, you greet him with fala Paulo, beleza? Hey Paulo, what's up? Fala is the same as habla in Spanish, and beleza is belleza. So literally, it doesn't make any sense in Spanish, but this is a real common way among younger Brazilians to say, hey, what's up? You could also say, good to see you. Bon te ver. Notice how the te is pronounced chi. Also how it becomes before the verb, not after as it does in Spanish. Word for word, this is as if you were to say bueno te ver in Spanish. Let's say he asks you how your weekend was. Como foi seu fim de semana? He'll probably ask you what you did. O que você fez? Would be the standard textbook way of saying this. Now, in the real world, what you'll find a lot of Brazilians actually saying is Kikseface. So why is this? Well, we saw in the last video how it's common to add the phrase eki when asking questions, which in this case would be o que é que você fez? In fast spoken Portuguese though, the u in the o que gets dropped, as well as the e in eki. And then we also saw how você gets shortened to se, which leaves us with kikseface. And then the other way to ask questions that we saw was the flip, where we flip the order of the sentence and place the interrogative word at the end. Você fez o quê? Or if you shorten the você to se, you get se fez o quê? My suggestion is to just stick to the standard version as you're starting out, just make things simple. But I did want to expose you to these spoken variations because you will hear them everywhere. And so it's really important to know if only to understand the Portuguese that you hear in the real world. This is something that most Portuguese language learning materials won't teach you, but it's the reality of how the language is spoken. If you went out with some friends, you would say, saí con uns amigos, like, salí con unos amigos. To say you went to dinner with your parents would be, Fui jantar com meus pais. Fui a cenar com mis padres. Notice how in Spanish, how it's always ir followed by the preposition a, then the verb. Whereas in Portuguese, it's just ir followed by the verb. So it's simply fui jantar and not fui a jantar. To say yesterday I went to the beach with my wife, you'd say ontem fui pra praia com minha esposa. Ayer fui a la playa con mi esposa. With my husband would be con meu marido. With my sons, con meus filhos. With my daughters, con minhas filhas. The LH sound in Portuguese is pronounced lia, like in the word million. From what you've seen so far, how similar would you say Portuguese is to Spanish? If you ask how many kids you have, he'd say, Quantos filhos você tem? Or he might do the flip and say, Você tem quantos filhos? Literally, you have how many kids? To say, I have is tenho, like tengo. So, I have two kids would be, Tenho dois filhos. If you have two girls though, you'd have to say, Tenho duas filhas. Notice how dois becomes duas before a feminine noun like filha. 
You might ask how old they are. Quantos anos eles têm? Or, quantos anos elas têm? If you only have girls. Eles and elas being the equivalents of ellos and ellas. Just like how Spanish uses the verb tener when talking about age, Portuguese uses the verb ter, meaning to have. Here, we'll just assume that the kids are young and go over numbers 1 through 10. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, sete, oito, nove, dez. So let's ask him if he has a big family. Você tem uma família grande? When replying yes to yes no questions like this, Brazilians usually don't just simply say yes like in English or Spanish. Instead of saying sim, they'll repeat the verb of the question in the appropriate person. In this case, tenho, I have or tengo. This is like if someone were to ask you in Spanish, tienes una familia grande? And you were to respond with tengo instead of si. To ask if he has siblings, you'd say, Você tem irmãos? Let's say he has two brothers and two sisters. Tenho dois irmãos e duas irmãs. Tengo dos hermanos e duas hermanas. Again, notice how dois becomes duas before a feminine noun like irmã, sister. If you want to ask him what he does in life, you'd say, O que você faz? Faz comes from the verb fazer, which is the equivalent of hacer in Spanish. One way of responding to this is by saying so, followed by your profession. For example, if you're an accountant, you'd say so contador, if you're male, or so contadora, if you're female. If you're an engineer, you'd say so engenheiro, or so engenheira. Just like in Spanish, you don't use the indefinite article with professions. Over the course of the conversation, if he says something that you don't understand, you can say, Desculpa, não entendi. And last but not least, maybe the most useful phrase is being able to ask how to say something in Portuguese. Como se diz em português? Which is the equivalent of Como se dice in Portuguese, just as how Spanish uses the impersonal se construction to make general statements, like in phrases such as aquí se habla español, Spanish spoken here, Portuguese has the same thing, aquí se fala español. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to have something that summarizes the content discussed in this video, you can download my guide, Your First Conversations in Portuguese, by clicking on the link in the description. You could use this guide as reference when working with a tutor or a language exchange partner, and it's meant to help you to start recognizing similar patterns from Spanish so you can learn Portuguese much more quickly. If you found this video useful, please let me know by hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Muito obrigado e até a próxima. Tchau!